right? Good morning, everyone. Yung buntag, welcome. So, can you just greet the person sitting beside you? Uh, settle down lang muna tayo na. Good morning. Yun. Sige. So, right? So, obviously, no, I'm not Pastor Archie. I'm Mav. I'm a campus missionary here. And today, we're starting a brand new series. Uh, how many here are, are, uh, is blessed with the life of Pastor Archie? <laughs> so, he just, uh, bago lang siya nag-birthday, so he turned another year into his life. <laughs> Dili, no? Dili lang na magsama. But he, uh, so later, if you have a chance to see him, please do greet him and know how much you appreciate him. Yee-hee, you know? <laughs> Sige. So, again, we're starting a brand new series right now. And fittingly enough, if you have been with us the uh, last week, Pastor Archie, at the end of his part uh, of his preaching, actually talked about this: that at the end, or, or in our dead ends, God would show Himself on how faithful He is, how powerful He is to open new doorways. And true enough, that is uh, the series that we are having right now. It's from death, uh, from from dead end to doorways. So basically, each and every year, we spend two weeks to talk about the missions. So how we are called to do, uh, how we are called to go and make disciples of all nations. So basically, this is our cry. That's why we call our campus ministry, what do we call our campus ministry, Gane? Every Nation Campus. And we're part of Every Nation Churches. So now, before anything else, allow me to ask a question. Have you ever tried being part or asked to do something that you you feel like you are not qualified to do so medyo napaatras ka gamay like ako i'm asked na uy computer engineering ka pwede pa ayo sa kung PC pwede pa ayo sa wifi sa printer katray wala kinsa diri mga IT comsai di mo ka relate or mga archi di ba ah archi ka pwede pa drawing ug portrait di ba may mga drawing right katray wala or sa mga PT, oh, di ba may mga kamuhilot? Pwede pa hilot. <laughs> Have you ever tried that? So there will be, so there are times in a life where in sometimes we feel like we're not qualified to do it and we feel like we're not the person for the job. And same goes for us here in church. Di ba? It's our cry to go and make disciples. It's our cry to disciple your friends, your classmates. And sometimes we ask ourselves, kaya ba gano'n ako? Am I the person to one? Pwede invite lang na ako sila sa church. Is it okay if I do that? No? Have you tried asking that question? Now, so, Christianity can oftentimes feel like that. So, we're go th- today, as we go through this uh, installment right here, we're going to ask these questions. It is possible for an, an, an unequipped believer to be sent to preach the gospel. On the other end of it naman, is it possible for a Christian to not take part of God's calling or to miss or calling and miss out on preaching the gospel? Possible bang a Christian no katos di ka mag-preach the gospel? So, can I just invite everyone to stand as we're going to read scripture today for, taken from Acts chapter 1. It's going to be verses 1 to 8. So you can open your apps or take your Bibles. It's taken from the English Standard Version. Allow me to read it for all of us. In the first book, O Theophilus, I, had, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after he, his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Verse 6, so when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem 
and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Join me in prayer for a while. Lord, we thank you, God, for this word. Thank you, God, for calling us to be part of this church. It's not an accident why we are here today. It's not a, an accident that we are part of this church. But Lord, thank you that you have called us first to our relationship to you, to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we can go out there and preach the gospel. Lord, thank you that we are not qualified because of what we have right now, but it is your calling that qualifies us, O oh Lord. So today, allow us to truly understand what it means to be loved by you and to be known by you and to be your, ch to your, to be your children. Lord, thank you for all these things. We pray for the preaching of the word today. In your mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. You may now take your seats. So a quick background lang no, of this book right here. The book of Acts is written by Luke. And it said na Luke and Acts are actually one book that is cut in the, in the middle. If you're going to read the book of Luke, it is the life and ministry of Christ. And we, if you go to the book of Acts, it's actually the continuation of that ministry through the works and acts of the apostle. It's called Acts because, because seemingly it, it shows what has been done by the apostles throughout the ministry after the life of Jesus. But more fitting for it to be called Acts of Christ and the Holy Spirit, right? Now, the beauty of the book is that it is written for Theophilus. And uh, scholars would say that it is a defense towards Theophilus, which could be a Roman official. And here, Luke is trying to defend the faith that Christianity is harmless, but at the same time, it is legal because Judaism is actually legal in the, in the Rome. And we need to understand that Rome was a superpower back then. And if if it is against the law, they are actually, or they actually killed Christians. In fact, they killed Jesus, right? So now the beauty of it is because it bridges the gap from the resurrection of Christ towards the preaching of the gospel to Rome. Now, what's amazing about it is, remember, these, war, these disciples were the very disciples, especially Peter, the, Pe the Peter that we know, Yasha always, Lord, if we're going to measure how much we or how much each and every one of your disciples love you. Lord, I love you the most. This is the Peter who is so proud that he is the best follower of Christ, competitive kayo. But when Christ was being brought towards crucifixion, this is the same Peter that said, Jesus, he denied Jesus three times before the crowing of the rooster, right? But now, we begin to see in Acts that this is the same Peter who powerfully, radically preaches the gospel. No money, no proven leaders, no technology for them, no great tools for them to preach the gospel. But powerfully enough, they were able to scatter the, the gospel into the ends of the world. Now, that's one of the things that's amazing about this. And disciples were just a few days ago running from the enemies for their own lives is now radically willing to die for the very lives of their enemies. In, in this, in, uh, today, we're going to tackle or we're going to go through these four things. Number one is the presence of Christ, the promise of the Holy Spirit, the providence of God, and the plan of His people. Verse 3 says, He presented Himself alive, to them after his suffering of, uh, by many proofs of appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. Starting off, this is the miracle. The past, the past month, siguro, diba, we have talked about miracles, believing in miracles, believing in the great things that God could actually do for us. But here, we are going to see the resurrection of Christ. This is the miracle. This is the very miracle. Marine, there's, yes, there's a lot of things, but here we begin to see the miracle that we all need. Jesus established the fact that His resurrection with many infallible proofs during that 40 days after His resurrection. Now, atheists would say a lot of debates against this, against the resurrection, because they know for a fact that 
for us here today, if we do not believe in the resurrection and if the resurrection was not real, then it's useless to be in this place gathered together as people. Because it could be that we're just believing to a story that is just made up. But our faith is, hen- or is hinged towards this truth that Christ's resurrection is the assurance that sin and its resulting death, both physical and spiritual, has been fully or have been fully overcome. That's the amazing thing. And I hope you take this by heart, the very importance of the resurrection of God. Jesus stayed for 40 days right here. And our Christian faith is hinged into the truth that Jesus truly resurrected. It's the fulfillment of the prophecies from, from the Old Testament. It's the proof that Jesus is truly the Son of God. It is a proof that what He has said during His ministry is true. And it is proof that right now, when we believe, there's, uh, there's actually going to be salvation. And I hope that we really take that by heart. Jesus stayed there for 40 days preaching towards these people, followers, for 40 days. People, hundreds of people actually saw Christ. So, there's, if 40 people or non-believers would say, uh, basi nag-hallucinate rito sila. But hundreds of people having the same hallucinations, that's impossible. That's unheard of. And they also said, they would argue that siguro ilang gikawat ang body ni Christ to say that Christ has been resurrected. But if you're going to, to look into history, remember that the tomb has been guarded by Roman soldiers, trained warriors, and again, who is going to steal the body of Christ? The people who are afraid and would say, nga, Warag, wala ko'y kinalaman na niya. Wala ko'y labutan na niya. That's impossible. But we begin to see a complete turn around of the radicalness, of the boldness of these people now willing to preach the gospel. If the, we are going to take one point today, let this be it. The one who calls you is present and alive. The Jesus that we worship is alive. It's not so, a made-up story or a legend that we, we always remember. Nga, oh, it's not a hero like Rizal or any other person that we look up to in terms of leadership and his courage. But this is a person that is completely God. This is the God that we worship. If you have been one of the disciples in that very specific moment, wherein, okay, you have seen the miracles of Christ in his lifetime, but you also saw that he was killed at the cross. He died. Imagine how roller coaster of a ride that is. So excited, then Christ died. Imagine what all the days I've been following God is useless. But here, the very first thing that happened in Acts is there was an assurance that Christ resurrected. So imagine, may spike balik. Kapan tayo man ang mag... mag Atang mo nga, sana mo ta- taas ang trade, ang trade nga, di ba ka mag, mag-atang mo na, right? Mga kuwender, kinsa hihilig o kuwender, mga forex. Wala? Okay, sige. Never mind. Okay, but now, they were so discouraged, but now, their levels were up the roof, way over the roof, because now, the Lord, the Messiah that they were believing in, oh, into, or they were, they were believing in, is the, the same person who has resurrected. Meaning, everything that, has, that he taught is actually real. So, dili useless ang akong, ang akong belief. Now, they were so excited. And if I were that person, okay, Lord, tinode ka? Okay, sige, I'm going to go out there, preach the gospel. I'm so excited. Let's go. But verse, verse, verse 4 says, And while staying with them, he ordered them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem. Ah, uh, Lord, nga naman. I thought there's an urgency for us to preach the gospel. I thought your kingdom is coming. I thought we're going to go, go, go. Wow, like, we can do this, Lord. You can conquer death. Nothing is impossible. It says to wait for the promise of the Father. Now, there is a promise. There is a promise for us, every believer right here today. 
But God wants us to wait. Who may here loves to wait? <laughs> Who may here loves to wait? Nga, what mo, linya ka sa Jollibee? Asa may mas taas nga ko ang linya? Adri ko. Even if magluto kag kanton, mag-atang kag, oh, dugay, three minutes ramon. Tawag ka nung dugay makain three minutes. Or mag-microwave ka. Or even here in church, di ba? Ganahan ta nga, pag sulod na to, sugod na yun. Hindi ka ganahan mag-wait, right? That's why, kabantay ko, pag 9, 9 a.m., wala pa'y tao mo, talikod na ko gamay, puno na dahil ng church. That's, that's how amazing, how impatient, how, how selfish we are at times. Because we are fallen beings. We do not want to wait. Now, how many of you here have seen videos of the marshmallow experiment given to kids, right? Kita mo na nga. Okay, they're going to be left with one marshmallow. Okay, I'm going out, okay? I'm going to double your marshmallow or give you more when I return. Just wait for me, okay? So it's a test of patience. And guess what? Majority of the kids would always fail the experiment. They want it now. Even if they know that in the near future or in the future, there is something that's greater. The same is true for us at times. We always say, we always grab the best of opportunities that we have. For the young professionals right here, or if you're looking for a job, isn't it nga, you're always going to grab the best opportunity, pinaka daog sweldo, pinaka nindot og benefits, without first asking God, Ah, Lord, this is from you. It's the best of the best, Lord. This is from you. And without consulting God, now the moment nga, okay, it's the best, but the task that you need to do is way beyond you. Lord, nga makuni mong gialawa ni Lord. Why are you giving me things that I am going to suffer to, Lord? Why do bad things happen to good people? Oh. Then we begin to question God. But in the first place, have we waited upon the Lord to hear what He has to say about things? We want things instant. But God always has the best timing, the best things for you. It doesn't mean that it's the best opportunity, it's the best at the moment, that that is for you. It's always the best to wait upon the Lord. G. Campbell Morgan, British evangelism preacher, says, Waiting for God is not abandonment of effort. It's wait, a waiting for God means it's an activity under command. Meaning you, you make God your Lord. He is the master, not you. Not your preference, not your own timing. God, readiness for any command that may come. You're actively waiting. And it's the ability to do nothing until the command is given. Waiting and being patient is actually a virtue. It's something that the wise, the mature, would do, right? Waiting is learning to trust the Lord. It's knowing that God's timing is always perfect. Kapag tayo mo nang linya mo sa maglinya mo sa Robinsons or any supermarket, tos ibili, nana mo tayo nandito ready with your mom, tos ah, napadi ko yung anak. <laughs> That's now, for like, ikaw, uh, makabalik ba siya? Or, we always think if, mayo bagin mo timing ako mama? Uh, di ba? We always question that. Sometimes, ang timing sa tong mama is not perfect. But God's is. We can always trust that He would always be there, be present. Even at this very moment of waiting, He is with you. God is not just there when you pray and when you receive, but even in the season of waiting, God is there. Sometimes, we feel like we've got th things figured out, we have the best ideas out there, and think that, okay, Lord, it is, it is you who has given me this idea, let's go. But we ought to wait. Verse 4 says, and while staying with them, or verse 5 rather, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. The promise is that Jesus will send forth the Holy Spirit. 
Now, when we think of the Holy Spirit, sometimes we rank the, the Trinity, right? The Father, the Son, and yes, He's still God, but He is the least of the three, the Holy Spirit. How many of you here think of that sometimes? Ako, I'm guilty of that, <laughs> right? But when we begin to look at the Holy Spirit in Scripture, the Holy Spirit was there at the very beginning. In fact, it was the Holy Spirit who came into chaos to give life and order over the place, right? It's the Spirit that was hovering in that place. The Spirit is as powerful as the Father and as the Son. He is God the same way the Father and the Son is, or are rather. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are all God, same power, different roles. Now the promise is that they are going to be successful the promise is that they are actually going to preach the gospel powerfully in different places. The same way that same promise is here for us, that at the end of the day, when we preach the gospel, no matter the outcome right now, at the end of time, the preaching of the gospel will be, will be done. But here, we need to always hear and wait for the Spirit. The Spirit would come. It is the role or the, the Spirit... Or the role of the Spirit is to give us the gifts that could be used in preaching the gospel. We always need to wait on the Spirit. This church, or this was the church that we are talking about in Acts. Don't you think that the Holy Spirit is already within the believers when Jesus said, wait for the Holy Spirit? These are believers. Isn't it that when we receive God as our personal Lord and Spirit, and Savior, the Holy Spirit is already within us. It, is, it has already been activated. But God says, no, wait for the Holy Spirit to come. The Holy Spirit is the activation of the power that is given to us. Well, yes, if, you, if you're not a believer, God illuminates you, convicts you to, be, to believe. When you are now a believer, the Holy Spirit reminds you of the things that you received but there is also a role that we need to take part of. We are to fan into flames the gifts that God has given to us. We need to actively fuel ourselves the same way if you have a car, naamoy mga sakinan, isn't it that you're, from time to time you need to refuel? Okay, if dili ka magpagasolina, mahutan ka along the way. No wonder if we do not refuel, we not charge ourselves with the Holy Spirit, fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit by praying, by reading the Word of God, by meditating and by demonstrating the Gospel. No wonder, tired na ta, Tuesday pa lang. If our only infilling of the Holy Spirit is in here, sa church, on a Sunday, no wonder we get so tired, we get so caught up with the things of the world, Tuesday pa lang. Tapos, kaman mo lang sa Facebook, no? Naanak kayo murag, sa tawag na? So that's a messenger, kanang murag imong status. Tama ba? If I'm going to read there, eight times out of ten, tired, kapoy, ah. Oh. <laughs> and these are Christian people that I know in church. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We, our gifts needs to be activated with the Holy Spirit so that we could go out there and preach the gospel. At the end of the day, it's still the timing of the Lord. We need to have our continuous infilling. Now, it is the Holy Spirit's role to change hearts. It has been the Holy Spirit who changed our hearts. It was not our... Yes, we take part and we, we have given our life to Christ, but it is the Holy Spirit who has changed our hearts. The same way, when we preach the gospel, it is also the Holy Spirit that could change the hearts of the one that we preach the gospel to. Right? Sometimes we think na, okay, this is the best strategy. So we, we think of strategies, of programs, of events. Okay, this is the best way for, me, for us to preach the gospel. But sometimes we forget to ask the Holy Spirit what really is the things that He wants. We might think it's the best, but, but if it's not the timing of the Lord yet, most likely we, might, we would always fail. It doesn't mean that it's the best strategy logically that's going to be a success already. 
We need to wait into the Holy Spirit. Verse 6 says, so, what, so when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Verse 7, he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father have fixed by your own authority. We begin to see here still the impatience of the disciples. But if we're going to look at it, wala sila rebukes ni God. Because it's logical for them to ask, Okay, Lord, you came back to life, and now we have the power, you have the authority, we, we believe in you, you can conquer all the, the, the government officials, you're going to take power, and you're going to win over Israel and the rest of the world. They're still thinking politically. Now, they're still thinking that God is going to take a position in government and they're going to lead each and every one. But God said, it is not for you to know the times of seasons. God's ways would still be, or is still different from our ideas. But if you're going to think of it, isn't it a good idea if Jesus would take a position, siguro in Rome, right? Tama ba? Nice ba siyang idea? God is going to lead His people. It's going... Who many you here thinks it's a good idea? Sige, wait. Okay. Right? It's a good idea. But that is not how God designs it to be. God's providence is greater than our hopes and aspirations. Always and always. He has plan over our concerns. Even right now, while, while hearing these things, the concerns that you have for tomorrow, for the rest of the week, the plans that you have for next month, next year, the timeline that you have for yourself, God knows each and every one of them. He knows exactly the desires of your hearts. He does not need for you to wait, or He does not need to wait for you to say, Lord, these are my desires. Isn't it sometimes that when you pray, you become you filter the things that you pray for because you sometimes we think na god i need to dapat akong tarungon ihanay na ko akong things nga i-share na ko kang lord or, diba? or we it should be always a good report and dili na to isulti kay lord i i have sinned today i have committed this and that but the reality is god knows everything that we have that we have in our hearts in our life even our dreams and aspirations. And we can commit them to the Lord. God's season is to bring justice for all. Sometimes we think that the Philippines is so corrupt, corrupt right now or uh, hopeless na ang Pilipinas. May payan, muwado ko sa gawas. Or whatever. When you look around, there's injustices. There's evil around. And we feel hopeless. But our assurance is that the Lord is still sovereign. He sees everything and He has all these things, concerns for us. Our confidence now, when we go out there, even when we live our life, as God is working in our lives, more molding ourselves, and having a desire to be out there, to be a blessing, to preach the gospel, our confidence is not with the good facility that we have, the air cons that we have. Our, our confidence is not on the preacher, on the lights or whatever. Our confidence is in this. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation, for everyone who believes to the Jews first and also to the Greek. Friends, we are called to preach the gospel. It's not enough for us to be good people, to be kind to people. Sometimes we think that to love people with the hopes of them getting to know who Christ is through us being kind to them, loving them. But if we truly love them, we preach the gospel to them. We, heard, we have heard this, the last preaching of Pastor Archie, that if we truly love our families, our classmates, our friends, the best way to love them is to preach the gospel to them. Verse 8, verse 8 says, But you will receive power 
when the Holy Spirit come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. To witness is to receive power. Power right here comes from the word dunamis, where dynamite, the word dynamite comes from. When we receive the Holy Spirit, there's going to be so much power that when we preach the gospel and the Holy Spirit is within us, it has the power to save. And now we have the ability to touch the hearts of people. When we look at ourselves, when we preach, when our confidence when we preach is how we live our life, how much of the scripture I memorized, how, how great quotes I have, how many books I have read, then we would always come into a conclusion that we do not qualify to preach the gospel. If our standard is our life, and I have committed sin, I, I still continue to be tempted, and I still continue to fall, I can't actually preach the gospel. I don't have the criteria to be a good preacher. I don't have the criteria to share my story to other people. If that's going to be the lens that we are going to look into, of course, all of us would always fail. None of us here truly qualifies to preach the powerful gospel. But the amazing thing is, it's the Holy Spirit that comes with the power that when we preach the gospel, we point people to God, we let them know how much they are loved, how much they are forgiven, how much God is a plan for them then people begin to hear. It's not about us. It's not about you. We always hear God does not call the qualified, but He qualifies the called. Our duty is simply to preach the gospel out there and to demonstrate it within our lives. To witness is not a command. It is a conclusion. Look at this. In verse 8, it says here, but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit come. It says here, and you will be my witnesses. It's not a command. It's not, okay, you will receive the power, pero you need to preach the gospel, okay? But it is an effect of us receiving the Holy Spirit. When we are truly, or when we truly accept who God is, we will be empowered to preach and it's automatic. If we do not have that compassion right now to preach the gospel to your friends, to your classmates, to your barcadas, to your families, then you need to ask yourself, have I truly surrendered myself to God? Or is it only the great things, the great promises of the Lord that I want to receive? Is my relationship with God based on events lang? Is my relationship with God dependent on my current state, is it dependent on if I am going to be blessed by God, if, if the plans of God are truly good for me? When you think about it, it says here, allow me to give the next, the next point lang. To witness is to sacrifice for love. Have you ever loved? <laughs> Do you love your families? Right? If they ask you something that sometimes hurt, are you willing to sacrifice for your loved one? Yes, right? We're willing to sacrifice. We don't even call it sacrifice when we do things that's difficult for our loved ones. So if we truly love God, it won't be a sacrifice. It won't be a command. It won't be a duty, a responsibility to preach the gospel. Because we ourselves experience the love of God. We have experienced how it is to be forgiven, to receive the promises of God, to receive the goodness of God. We have tasted, we have seen who God is. And if truly that is us who have received the goodness of God, then we know the heart of God for people. It's not enough for us to come here every Sunday 
It's good that you experience the goodness of God, but it's not supposed to end with you. Imagine if the pe- person who preached the gospel to you was contented being where they are, knowing how much God loves them and the, how the eternity is with God. Then nobody preached the gospel to you, then you're not going to be here. To preach the gospel is to contend for God. Yes, sometimes we will be mocked, sometimes we're going to be rejected. But I tell you, to be here in the Philippines, the worst thing that could happen to you is to be unfriended. <laughs> so, dili gani unfriend, balibaran lang ka, you're going to be mocked for a while, but they would eventually forget. That's the worst that could, we could happen to majority of the places here in the Philippines. Right? But why is it that we don't preach the gospel? Is it out of fear or out of the absence of love? Maybe we don't love our friends enough. Ako alang ni. Good news, ako alang ni. If we truly love God, if we truly love people, then preaching the gospel is not a choice to make. But it is an, a conclusion that we're going to have in our life. Now we're about to end. But allow me to encourage you for, further with this. Who may here knows that we have been commissioned by God? Okay. You are commissioned by God. Who may here knows that you're commissioned by God? You know? So, okay. so again, I told you in the beginning of, uh, before I preached that this is also a talk for us and to tell you more about the, the missions that we have. Allow me to read Luke chapter 10, that's verses Luke chapter 10 verses 1 and 2. Ah, Luke chapter 10 verse 2 says, ah, there. Ito lang. 1 and 2. It says here, after this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them that's Apostello, on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out to ekbalo laborers into his harvest. To Apostello is to send forth people for the mission. To Apostello means commissioned to deliver a message and to ekbalo is to drive or to force or to cast out people for his mission. At the end of the day, we are always gonna be sent. And allow me to present this data right here. Sometimes say, we think no, na, ah, there's, there are already missionaries out there. Locally, we have Gigi Ampas. You know, you know Gigi. Gigi is our cross-cultural missionaries. And we think, na, okay, na, that's enough. We have one missionary here in Numagete. I know that there are a lot of missionaries to the world. In fact, every nation is now present in 80 con- more than 80 countries globally because we have been sending out missionaries. Sometimes we think that's enough. But allow me to see this right here. These people, th- these groups of people, and the ratio of how much one missionary is towards the, the population. That's so great right there. So we are not actually doing well enough when it comes to preaching the gospel. In fact, you're going to see other NGO organizations that goes out there to serve other people because friends, the church is not doing enough of its part going out there, preaching the gospel, serving the people, and demonstrating the goodness of God. So how do we address this? As a church, we are commissioned to do this. Three things. Number one is to pray. Luke chapter 10 verse 2 says, we are to pray earnestly to the Lord for the harvest to send out. Friends, include it in your prayer. Make us, or I suggest that you also make a prayer point within the week to always pray for our missionaries. Pray for the missions that's out there. Pray for the nations. Pray for open doors in which we can actually serve the nations. Open doors for us to preach the gospel. Let's continue to pray as a church. 
Second is give. Romans chapter 10, verses 14 to 15 says, How then will they call on Him who have not believed? Remember the numbers that we have showed you kanina, the, the groups of people. The numbers that there, they're not going to hear or believe the gospel that they have not heard. And how are they to hear without someone preaching? We need to send forth people out there. But also, he says here, how are they to preach unless they are sent? That's why we have Gigi and other, and other cross-cultural missionaries that we have sent. Encourage you to pray about these things. Part of us being a church is giving and partnering with missionaries that's doing the work. How many here loves to see a future within everyone in the globe is being united by one God, one preaching, and one gospel. How many here would love to see that? Right? Wala yabon? Come on now. I hope, I hope truly now, you see the gravity and, and the greatness of, of the love of God that we are going to pray, we're going to partner. In fact, as a church, we're partnering to missions globally. That's just who we are. And lastly is, we ought to go. Matthew chapter 8, 28, verses 19 to 20 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. This is what we consider the Great Commission. This is the last, kumbaga, this is like the last will of God before He ascended into heaven. It says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you to the ends of the age. Friends, that is the command that we are. Maybe some of you here have felt it within your heart, a desire to go to different, to different nations to preach the gospel out there. Do let us know. So that we can pray about it together. And what God, it's God's will for you to go out there. You're going to be the next Gigi Ampas, the next cross-cultural missionary that we as a church, Victory Dumagate, will be sending out into the nations. Friends, we ought to pray, to give, and to go in order for us to take part of the mission of God. We are to, to do this, the Great Commission together. If we don't have it, it's going to be the Great Omission. And we don't want to miss on that. Allow me to pray for all of us as, as we end this part right here. Lord, we first thank you, O God. We thank you that before anything else, before the, the command that you have for us to preach the gospel to your people, to the ones that even we consider enemies, God, to the unlovables, to the, to, to the persons out there, God. Lord, thank you that you have assured us, O oh Lord, that you are present, that you are alive, that you have truly resurrected, God, that you have the power to change our lives, God. Thank you that it, it's not a question whether you are real, whether you love us or not, but it's a question of whether we truly receive you as our personal Lord and Savior. We're thinking that before we are commanded and commissioned to go out there, you have truly cemented, God, the foundation of your love towards us. Lord, thank you that we are love. Thank you that you are a good God. Lord, at the same time, thank you that it does not end with us. Out of that love, the abundance of, of the power that, you have, that we have received here on earth, Lord, we can't help but preach the gospel out there. We thank you that you have sent forth the Holy Spirit that would help us, that would enable us to preach the gospel. There's an assurance that indeed the gospel is going to be preached, O oh Lord. And even at times, God, that we're going to be mocked, we're going to be rejected. Lord, thank you that we're not going to take it against us, but we're going to take it as a badge of honor that yes, we might have been rejected here in the world 
But Lord, we have not rejected you. We have not rejected your commission for us to preach the gospel and that you have loved us all the more. Yes, there's nothing that we can do here on earth, God, that could love, make you love us less or make you love us more. But Lord, thank you that out of that love that you have for us, we're not going to look at it as something that we do as part of the church. It's not a command, but it's something that we can simply help because we know how good you are. Lord, we thank you that even right now with the concerns that we have, the excuses as, we, as valid as they are, the, the emotions that we have right now, the feelings that we have, Lord, as valid as they are, Lord, they can never be truly an excuse enough for us to say that we cannot preach the gospel. Business, God, is something that we can actually push through, Lord. Because we can always make time for the things that we value. Lord, make us a people, God, that would not miss out on the mission that you have for us. I've said in your word, God, that if we want more of you in our lives, we're go, to go out there to preach the gospel to the people and to the rest of the nations, Lord. Lord, we thank you for who you are. In your mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Can we give God a round of praise for that?